Alright, so I've been praying on this and trying to figure out the appropriate right way to address this. And I don't ever speak unless I've actually, well, I don't say anything unless God tells me to say it. And I say everything God tells me to say, so that's pretty much the appropriate, perfect way to address this. Um, there are 93 believe on average gun related deaths in this country per day and in other countries they have maybe 126 in a year not a solution is simple but something that no one's going to want to do I understand that because that would mean you would have to um, allow Jesus Christ to be part of this country. And if you did that, these things would stop. And it's not God doing it. These people that do things like this are angry. So tormenting them is not a good idea. And putting it on TV to get the people that feel like these people fired up and give them ideas is not a good idea either. So I was like, okay, well, there's two quick solutions right there. Problem solved. But change is not going to come overnight. I know that. It's going to have to happen slowly. So I'm like, all right, well, here's how you do it. Okay, the feasible thing would be like, I don't know anybody who's ever used geometry. Replace one of the classes with a Bible study. Okay, so that's not going to happen. Well, if there are Christians in these schools, I know in high school you can start groups. Start a Christian group. Then use that group to love people that feel left out, rejected, so they don't get angry. Make someone feel loved and they're not going to shoot things. So I was like, that's probably not going to happen either. You have gun shows where people can buy guns. You have private sellers that will sell guns. The rest of the countries, when they had shootings happen, they removed the guns. Then shootings didn't really happen because these are still isolated incidents as far as in schools what's going on every single day is a whole different <sighs> the whole point and the conclusion I've come to is democracy has completely failed. One, because there's people involved in it, but there's way too many people involved in it. The separation of church and state just set the stage for everything you're seeing right now. Harsh message, I know, but there's your solution. Now, understanding the nature of people is important. Um, if you're going to try and understand this world, which I don't, I still don't. But I take a step back and I, I try and find the beauty in it. I try and appreciate it anyway. It doesn't make sense to me that everybody's solution to pain is that they're not going to feel it. 
thus prolonging the pain in different ways and adding more pain than you have to deal with. There's always going to be something in the world that is going to give the sensation of pain. And whenever I um, have the thoughts that, okay, well, and the spirit just stops me and the spirit's just like, then why do you feel joy and peace in some places and in some places you don't? Until the world accepts the fact <laughs> That everything has a spirit, and the spirit controls everything, as the scripture says. <clears throat> We're not going to get anywhere. Until you are able to view what you see through the spirit, you will not understand really anything about you, or anything about anyone else if the spirit has not revealed it to you it is not truth and the scripture says fear of the lord leads to wisdom so there was your first problem if you have people that are told they're not going to be held accountable by god they're going to have no reason not to do Whatever they see on TV and in so many aspects of um, this world that just gives them ideas. And I'm like, technically, the fact that there's only shootings is a miracle. And at first I was like, this is the church's failure. So I laid it right at the church's feet. I was like, who didn't talk to him? I was like, how come no one got involved in this? But I also recognize that spirits remember things that they're comfortable with. So clearly in a past life, this dude was ready for war. It's probably not wise to piss off somebody that their spirit remembers war. And no, I don't think that he just woke up one day and just decided, hey, this is what I want to do. I think that from the research I have um, done, because I don't speak ignorantly about anything until I've explored it and um, understand it a lot of people write out fantasies and they have names in these fantasies and people they're thinking of for certain reasons and that's the scary part is that this is happening in our schools in our nation people are provoking other people and then when there's a response they act like they have no um, responsibility in it so what I'm saying in essence I'll teach this lesson again. And what I mean by that is this lesson about the water jug. Okay, now, 
This is your body, okay? Inside this body, you have a spirit. Now, when you add the spirit of Jesus Christ to it, it gets filled up to here. This is your happiness. This is your joy. This is your peace. The way you fill that up is through reading the Bible, which renews your mind, which the scripture says, renew your mind. Do not be transformed by this world. <clears throat> and then you have your worship music. Now, despite what anybody has ever said about Christianity and religion, there were crusades, I recognize that, but Christians don't go around shooting things. So it's not really a bad idea to allow Christians to be Christians and praise their God. Why does everybody have freedom of speech except Christians? <clears throat> so I totally get the fact that Christians are like, we don't want nothing to do with this world. I get that. <clears throat> so then I can't blame Christians. I can't blame the church. Because they have no choice but to stay quiet and to create their own world inside this world. Okay. Truth of the matter is, if people were taught that Jesus Christ was God and he holds people accountable for their actions, because it says what you reap you will sow. <clears throat> Basically, what you do to somebody else is going to be done to you so that you know how it feels. So that you don't do it no more. If that was ingrained in the schools, by the age of eight, people would be a lot... Um, they would think differently, act differently, and treat each other differently. So democracy is a complete failure. A monarchy is the only way it was going to work. And that was the plan with America. And then America was like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. So, God was like, okay. And slowly, as God knew, this nation phased him out. So then God did what God always does and says, okay, well then have this king, have this king, have this king, have this king. <clears throat> so Donald Trump is not going to be able, this has gone too far. You're not going to stop school shootings. If it worked in other countries, gun control is the answer. Remove them. You're not going to do that. Because there's money. There's too much money um, floating around regarding the sales of firearms. And there's too much money that governs people's lives. It's not going to happen. So what's happening now basically is some kind of placating technique that's not really going to do anything or come to fruition. It's just something so that the president can say basically, hey, I'm on it, I'm doing something, and then it's just going to get pushed under the rug. I already know that. We've had 18 school shootings this year. That's insane.
Now, a lot of them are being prevented and they're being um, discovered before um, they get carried out. So God is still protecting this country, but this country is divided on the issue. Half are like, okay, we believe Jesus Christ is God. About 3% of that half actually live like it. So, at least people are finally getting fed up and they want something done, but they're not willing to do what needs to be done in order to have something done. So, I mean, this is technically what the majority wants. <clears throat> because guns make them feel safe because they're afraid for their families and themselves. And guns give people a sense of power. Like, they can control where the bullets go and things like that. None of which makes any sense to me. So until the real issue is dealt with, until the root of the cause is dealt with, I mean, there's... there's if people really want to change, and they weren't um, wanting change as long as it didn't inconvenience them in any way, or actually change their lives in any way, just kept them um, safer, but it had no real personal responsibility on them. <clears throat> Does that make any sense? That's why I'm like, how can people like, think I'm crazy? I, I get wisdom from the Holy Spirit and I feel like everything I say makes sense. And uh, It's strange to me. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I guess truth does that. You know, you have to introduce the truth and then people are like, yeah, that's the truth. And then others are like, I don't want to accept that as the truth. That's what it comes down to. And, um, because it's not the truth they think they want until they actually get the truth. Then they're like, thank you for the truth. And then they're set free. That's how that works. Because their bondage is, um, same as it's always been in the Bible, worshiping other gods. Whether it be money, whether it be actual celebrities, whether it be their jobs, their ego, their pride, their inability to um, just go through pain knowing that it's going to get better. So I get why people date. They're like, okay, I need to test this out because I want to make sure that you're going to stay. Well, the conclusion I've come to is people are always going to be bouncing in and out of my life. So I can either adapt and learn how to bounce back really fast when they do, or I can stay completely alone. And the ones that want to stay will stay. And this is also a picture of your relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is why people um, feel a lot of times like um, they're... Where'd it go? There it is. I always know where everything is. That they only have this much happiness. It's because they pretty much just pour out the Holy Spirit by not staying with the Spirit as the Spirit moves and the Spirit speaks and they're just they're not looking to be in God's will 
And what that basically means is God's will is for you to be happy. And it will normally be something you're not comfortable with or really want to do. And the spirit will say, come on, we're going over here now. So it's like, <clears throat> there have been so many um, fulfillments of the book of Revelation, of the book of Daniel, of every single book in the Bible, that it's like, okay, there's one book that talks about everything that's happening now. How can you ignore that? I even read that book. Is, is another thing. I'm like, people call themselves this and that and they don't read the Bible at all. And I'm like, how? How are you renewing your mind then? Which is what Christians are supposed to do because we are supposed to be in the world but not of the world. Because God always said that. He wants his people holy. And set apart. The example. Because what that does is creates, okay, you can live like this. But we're having way more fun over here. And life is supposed to be fun. Like, that's my biggest frustration is everybody comes into my life. And I'm like, okay, let go. And just experience it. It's fun. It's amazing. A little bit scary at first, but you get used to it. And it's like, no one will do that. And I'm like, then what do you want from me? And I was like, I don't know what you were expecting. And then to make themselves feel better, they're just like, he's insane. People call Jesus Christ insane. And the other half of people were like, no, these are not the words of a demon or an insane person. This dude makes perfect sense. <clears throat> I'm just wise. <laughs> the spirit gives me wisdom. I learn things so that I can teach. And I'll be like, this is the truth. And I see evidence of the truth all the time. So I'm like, I watch how our nation, which I love and have served and put on the uniform. And I went through an extensive mental and background check because I worked in a communication center. I had had a top secret clearance, um, SCI rated, which is the second highest you can get. That's all I needed for where I was um, stationed at the time. Then I was going to go into combat communications on AWACS. So, I mean, I've been mentally evaluated. I've been, and then I know there's a theory where people are like, well, you know, sometimes it lays dormant and then out of nowhere you just go insane and I'm like that, that doesn't make any sense I was like I seemed way less wise and still wise but and still helping people but not as spiritually gifted as I was this didn't start happening until I returned to my church and had hands laid on me and words spoken over me and anointed so many times and prayed over and I was told I'm going to have a huge harvest and I was told that I was going to be used by God in a mighty way and I love serving the Lord and then I found out some things. I was like there was a process to this that had nothing to do with a mental illness. It had to do with facing giants. You will always face giants. 
And my giant at this time happens to be people coming into my life and leaving my life. Okay. At least I know my giant. That's going to make me stronger and not fear um, people leaving me. Which is a great fear to have compared to the fears I've had in every other lifetime. Which was basically a lot worse. So... And again, Jesus said, Psalms 110, Psalm 110, you can see David basically is prophesying about Jesus because David was Jesus. That's why he said, how can I be called the son of David? Because in Psalm 110 it says, My Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And Jesus said, How is that possible if you're so smart? And he was talking to, um, he was tired of being questioned by Pharisees. And he was just like, You know what? Let me just put you in your place for a second. Because you keep arguing with me when I'm trying to help. He's like, how is that possible? And no one could answer that. I just answered it for you. But if you haven't read Psalm, and you haven't read the Bible, you're not going to understand the things of God. That's why there is a Bible. That's one of the reasons there's a Bible. There's this place, um, not in this nation, but um, the levels of carbon dioxide are so high that if you go near it, you will die. Well, our air is messed up, so when I'm, these are healing herbs that I'm smoking, it's natural tobacco. And what it does is it kind of like coats my lungs and it also, um, instead of breathing out just pure carbon dioxide, I'm breathing out a healing property into the air. Our air is so messed up, it's causing people cancer. It's not chemtrails. It's... Burning gasoline was not a good idea. <clears throat> and neither was breathing out strychnine and arsenic from store-bought cigarettes. That was not a good idea. Too much copper can be poisonous. Putting that in wires all around you is not a good idea. The radiation from a microwave, not a good idea. In small doses, it's, it will have an effect on you. Eating food that was tortured is not a good idea. So, I mean, when I come to conclusions, I'm pretty expansive about it. I learn it. I research it. I see the evidence of it. The Spirit tells me it's true. That's it. And I walk in it. Like, if people want to know about weight loss and things like that, I can teach on that. But it's going to be way different than you expect. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not going to. I'm just like, all right, teaspoons. I'll teach teaspoons. But I'm still going to live my life the way the Spirit wants me to live it. So that I can show 
the things God creates, like natural tobacco, is perfect. The things man creates can be useful and some of it can be harmful. This is common sense, I feel. I don't feel these are the words of a crazy person. Um, and it does take self-discipline to live a healthy, perfect life. It does take denying yourself what you want to do because God knows what you really want to do. And sometimes waiting teaches you to appreciate who you get and what you get when you get it or them. And that's been a huge um, thing too. I feel spouses should appreciate each other. And if people are going to bed hop and do all this, then, well, at least you can use that to um, introduce the real one in front of them, and they appreciate the real one. But you're also having to deal with the fact that if they're not trusting God, they're not going to know what to do with the real one. Because they're not going to trust the real one. Of course there's false prophets. They're standing on the podiums right now. Not all because they want to be false prophets. It's just some are not hearing from God and they're just saying something because they have to. And some are developing in their walk. A pastor doesn't just be a perfect pastor. There's only one Billy Graham. And my, um, my thoughts on that whole matter is good. He did not like being in, um, older body and he didn't like the world really he, he really couldn't understand it either because people stopped listening to him <clears throat> the reason he was so dynamic and so on fire which people when they are on fire for Jesus the ones that consistently stay on fire for Jesus, their spirits are coming alive and they're remembering this is my purpose. And everything makes perfect sense to them. They have a thirst for God. They have a thirst to spend time in God's presence. They crave Jesus Christ. They crave holiness. They crave it. And that's what happens when you're born again. What that means is, what Jesus Christ would say is, I will give you a new spirit. And he was saying, I'm giving you my spirit. And it connects with yours. And then we're always together. Your choice. Or you can leave the spirit. The spirit never leaves you. You leave the spirit. And people don't get that verse. There's a lot of verses people don't get where, um, cause there was times that Saul was, um, in the spirit and there's times he wasn't. He was the example of pretty much what not to do. And <clears throat> one time he was in the spirit, he said, therefore there is no condemnation in anyone who is in Christ. Well, what that means is if you're following the Holy Spirit, God is not going to condemn you because he sees himself in you. He doesn't really see anything you've ever done, doesn't care. You are a new creation. 
in Christ Jesus. Meaning you are a new creation. Now it's you and Jesus living in the same body. And that means you're going to take on his attributes. You're not going to fear things. You're going to have faith. You're going to remember the word of God when you get into situations. Where it says, be anxious for nothing. We're prayerful in supplication. Which means, basically, God's will is going to be done in your life. You have nothing to worry about. And there's a difference between people who seek to live for Jesus and they seek to um, always know that they're in God's will. And there's people that don't even give that a second thought. Because they don't crave it. They don't set aside time to be in God's presence. Then how can they say they love Jesus? And that's one reason I don't really, um, I take worship music very seriously. And I, um, I, I guess I take everything seriously, but I really don't take anything seriously. But when I'm exploring something or teaching it, I was like, I'm, I'll teach you perfect. And I'll understand if um, you like other things. I'm like, that's part of your personality. That's fine. Mine is this way. I go straight for perfection. Once I find perfection, I stick with it. So, I mean, that there's your solutions. That's the truth. So I'm putting that into someone's heart. Someone's going to understand. And someone's going to do it. Because the fact of the matter is, you've never had a Christian school really experience too much violence. It's only the world that seems to thrive on violence. I don't like it. Like, I don't find it entertaining or anything like that, but I've been through so much that I just don't see the point of it. I'm a warrior. I used to scrap when I was younger. All it did was make me feel bad. Face giants did all that. <clears throat> so, hopefully, I can go to sleep. And I made this video because the spirit told me to. I'm not going to leave you without solutions. I'm not really leaving you. I'm not ever going to do that. That's one thing I'm trying to prove. And two, there's your solution. There's too many factors involved in gun control for it to be effective. It's not the solution. But it would make a big dent. And I feel like maybe people should start thinking that way. What can we do that's going to make the biggest dent in this problem? Because you're not ever going to fix it until you allow Jesus Christ to be king of this nation like he said he was going to be. So, <clears throat> but what you can do is minimize um, the negative impacts of worldly thinking and not allow it into your life. 
Because really, I mean, what it comes down to is you, your family, your God. And I tell people all the time, and as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's stupid not to. And by that I mean, stupid means you know better, but you're doing it anyway. I, I don't understand that. So that, that, that answers that. It's better to have to me, one big fight than fights every single day. It's better just to draw the line and be like, okay. <clears throat> and then you realize why you fought was so that you could express how you were really feeling. Which is fighting is healthy, you should fight. When I say this, I mean in terms of a marriage, it's way better to express it than to repress it for so long that you don't even know how you feel about things. My whole thing has always been, well, don't make me angry and then I won't have to be angry. It makes perfect sense to me. I'm like, I'm not some kind of tyrant or anything like that. I'm the head of my household. And I lead. Because no one else can. And it's my job. And I get why she wants to be in control because she feels if she's in control, she can stop herself from getting hurt. But every time she interacts with me, she ends up hurting herself. And it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like it doesn't matter what I say, what words I use, even if the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. And the Holy Spirit is always speaking through me. I love you more than you know.